Good morning. Good morning. Did you ever notice how much power Lev has? He stops playing and people show up. And it looks, you know, like, oh, we're just waiting for you, Lev. So I thank you for, for leading us. A happy Mother's Day. God bless you uh, for who you are and what you have done and how you have served. Uh, we're glad to have you with us today. And if you're watching from home, God bless you as well. I'm glad that you're with us this morning as well. Um, if you could comment below the feed so that we can thank and praise God, uh, knowing that you are a part of our life this morning. Um, on this day, we gather again together and Jesus is with us. It's a promise that he makes to us and that he keeps for us. Our order of worship is outlined in the worship folder that you've already received. Let's, let's get started. Let's stand up, say good morning to one another in God's name. Good morning. Before we begin, you'll, you'll hear this again later on. In your worship folder, the gospel lesson today, the, the attribution is correct. In other words, John 10, 22. But the text that is there uh, is incorrect. It wasn't changed. So you'll hear uh, during the Bible readings today the correct gospel lesson. It won't match your bulletin, 
uh, but it's the one that's chosen. By the way, if you're watching us online, we did change it online, so you'll be seeing the correct version there. Okay, uh, we'll begin our worship this morning. I'm sorry, let's, we'll begin our worship this morning and, and we'll begin uh, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not helped you in our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. <clears throat> Hear the good news that God gives to you and to me today. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a call and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We'll begin or we'll continue with our first hymn this morning. your Holy Spirit, that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We'll continue with the readings selected for today. lesson for today is from the book of Acts, chapter 20, 
verses 17 through 35. Now for Miletus, Paul sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church to come to him. And when they came to him, he said to them, You yourselves know how I lived among you the whole time, from the first day I, I set foot in Asia, serving the Lord with all humility and with tears and with trials that happened to me through the plots of the Jews. How I did not shrink from declaring to you anything that was profitable and teaching you in public from house to house, testifying both to Jews and to Greeks of repentance toward God and of faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, behold, I am going to Jerusalem, constrained by the Spirit, not knowing what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and afflictions await me. But I do not account my life of any value, nor as precious to myself, if only I may finish my course and the ministry that I receive from the Lord Jesus, to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. And now, behold, I know that none of you among whom I have gone about proclaiming the kingdom will see my face again. Therefore, I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all of you. For I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God, Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you, overseers, to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock, and from among you, from among your own selves will arise men speaking twisted things to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore, be alert. Remembering that for three years I did not cease, night or day, to admonish everyone with tears. And now I command you it to God and in the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you the inheritance among all those who are sacrificed. Who are sanctified. I coveted no one's silver or gold or apparel. You yourselves know that these hands ministered to my necessities and to those who were with me. In all things I have shown you, that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is in Revelations chapter 7, verses 9 to 17. After this, he looked and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? And I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to John chapter 10 verses 22 to 30. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, the Feast of Dedication took place at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the colonnade of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me. 
but you do not believe because you are not part of my flock. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. And I, I and the Father are one. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Let's continue our service by singing the next hymn in your bulletin. to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, again, our message today is from the reading of the gospel. Uh, the gospel is the gospel according to St. John chapter 10. Let me read just a portion of it again. It's what we heard earlier. So the Jews gathered around Jesus and they said to him, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, Tell us plainly. And Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness about me. But you do not believe because you're not among my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. For my Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. This is the word of the Lord. Today's gospel reading from St. John chapter 10, it comes from the Good Shepherd chapter of the Bible. In fact, the, the lectionary, the, the series of readings that we use on a Sunday morning, they always pick a gospel lesson from this chapter, John chapter 10, for this Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Easter. It, we call it Good Shepherd Sunday. The first year we learned that Jesus is the door to the sheepfold. He's the only way to eternal life and eternal safety. In the second year, we learned that the shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. And today, we hear that Jesus, our good shepherd, he knows his sheep. And they follow him. Jesus is our good shepherd. And he knows us. He knows us. You know, we all know people, but... 
but we don't all we don't know all of them. We know the name of the president of the United States or the governor of Georgia. We know Joe Biden or or Brian Kemp. We we know famous people who are in the news, Elon Musk or or somebody else, but we don't really know them. We've heard of them. We know of them. But we don't know them. Who do we know? We know our spouses, our kids, our, our close friends, and those who are around us. We've spent time with them. We know their personality traits. And not only do we know them, they know us. We're talking about this kind of knowledge when we talk about <coughs> Jesus. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, Jesus, God himself, he knows us. He's our shepherd. We are his sheep. And he says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. And that kind of knowledge brings a benefit to you and to me. He said, I give them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will be able to snatch them out of my hand. And here is Jesus, the very son of God. Here is Jesus. God of all things. And he's saying that his sheep receive eternal blessings that only he can give. Because he knows us. You'd be surprised to, to realize how long God has known us. St. Paul in his letter to Ephesus, the spirit is in him and he writes, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. And here it comes. Even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. Did you hear that? God knows you. In fact, he knew about you even before the world was created. Even before he said, let there be light. He knew you and he chose you. Think about that. Before light was made, before the animals were formed, before the, the sea was set in its place, God knew you. And he knew how he was going to save you. We know that God created the universe through his word. We know that his son Jesus is the word made flesh. And when that word participated in the creating of the world, he already knew you. He knew who you were. He knew that you would rebel against him. He already knew that he would give you a perfect set of instructions to live in peace and in harmony with him, to live in his blessings, and that you would ignore them. You would do your own thing. He knew that. He knew you'd make your own set of instructions, corrupted, uh, incomplete, and that you would follow them. And he knew about the suffering and pain that you would inflict upon yourself and upon the other sheep who are all around you. But the eternal word, God, the son of God, knew all this and still resolved to be your shepherd. He resolved to save you with the sacrifice, his sacrifice, with the sacrifice of himself on the cross. You already knew he would take on human flesh through the birth to the Virgin Mary. He already knew that he would live a life of poverty and homelessness and humility under the law. He already knew that he would have to keep that law perfectly. And then, despite being innocent, that he would suffer and die as a criminal under the law. He knew that this is what it would take to redeem you, to buy you back, to make you his own. And he still wanted to do it. He still wanted to be with you. He still yearned to be your good shepherd. You know, it's easy to ask if God had known all of this before creation, then why do it? Why go through all of that? And again, Paul, 
through the Holy Spirit, gives us the answer. It's in Romans. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Before creation, God already knew you and God already loved you. He, he knew that you would rebel against him. He knew that, that you wouldn't stay faithful. And he already loved you. And it's that love that drives him. It's that love that leads him. It's that love that uses that he uses to claim us as his own despite our disobedience. Before creation, God knows you better than you know yourself. And still, he loves you to be his own. Loves you enough to suffer and die for you. Loves you enough to be your good shepherd. That's what it means when it tells us that Jesus knows his sheep. That he wants us to be his sheep. And God, he also wants us to know our shepherd. <laughs> To know that love. That's the reason he speaks through the prophets and the apostles. He wants us to know that we are his chosen. And that he is our good shepherd. He wants us to know that his love for us has no end. Will not fail. Does not give up on us. But always wants us to be his own. He wants us to know the security of our salvation. The comfort of having a shepherd who is always with us. To know that there's no burden he won't carry for us. There, there's no job that he won't do on our behalf. No danger he won't run into in order to save us. That he will carry not only our burdens, but even carry us himself. See, Jesus, he doesn't want us to know about him. He wants us to really know him. To know him forever. And he's given us himself in the Bible so that we may know him. See, he's the word. And when we open up the Bible, the word comes to us. God himself comes to us by means of his Holy Spirit. Unfortunately, there are some who don't know that, who don't know their good shepherd. In fact, right in this chapter, it says the Jews gathered around him and said, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. This is John chapter 10. See, the problem isn't that Jesus has been hiding himself from us. He's been telling us he's the Christ John chapters 1 through 9. But sometimes, in our stubbornness, we refuse to know him. In spite of all the evidence, we refuse to believe him. But Jesus, in his love, he still reaches out for us. He still is patient and takes time so that all may know him, so that all may love him, so that all may hear his voice. so that we might be his sheep as well. Jesus, the good shepherd, he doesn't just know about you. He knows you, and he's known you since before the creation of the world. He knows you. He knows you better than you know yourself. He knows you way better than any earthly shepherd would ever know about his sheep. Because of that love, he sacrifices himself for you, and he saves you. And God the Father honored your good shepherd by raising him from the dead. That's how we can know that Jesus really is our good shepherd. How we can know that Jesus is really different from those who are around us. How we can know that Jesus really does love you. And he's our good shepherd, not just while we live here on the earth, but he'll always be our good shepherd. Our good shepherd for eternity because he lived, he died, and then he rose again. So that his, that his presence in our life will continue. So that his love for our life 
will carry on so that we will never perish, but we will be with him because he calls us by name as a shepherd calls his sheep and we follow him. And he is with us and he loves us and we will never perish and no one can snatch us out of his hand. It's as David said in the Psalms, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Written about that shepherd, that good shepherd, that loving shepherd, a shepherd who knows you and still loves you and claims you to be his own. Amen. And may the peace of Christ that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. Having heard God's word and his promises, we respond by confessing our faith in the words of the creed. If you're able, would you stand and join with me in the Apostles' Creed. <laughs> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Good Shepherd calls to us. He knows us. He knows our worries and our trials. And so we come to him with our prayers. In your worship folder, you've received that prayer list so you can take this home with you and keep these prayers in your life every day uh, as you have your devotions. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus for all people according to their needs. Dear Jesus, you are our good shepherd. We know our spouses, our children, our parents, our friends. We've spent time with them and, and know their personality traits. Not only do we know them, but they also know us. This is what you're talking about. This is the kind of knowledge you mean when you say that you know us. My sheep hear my voice, you tell us, and I know them and they will follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. Here you are, mm. the God, the very God of all things, and you are saying that we sheep receive the eternal blessings that only you can give us because you love us. O oh Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. prayers. We thank you that before creation you already knew us and still you loved us. You knew that we would rebel and you loved us. You knew that we would be helpless and hopeless and you loved us. You love us enough to suffer and die for us, enough mm -hmm. to become our good shepherd. Mm -hmm. Oh Lord, we pray today, give us your spirit that we may always know that this is what you mean when you say you know your sheep. Mm -hmm. And that we may have confidence that because of you, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of love, deliver the sick from their illnesses, give relief to the suffering, help the troubled to know peace of mind, and be with those who are grieving and in their final days. We pray to you today that you would give patience to those who bear with their own infirmities and disabilities, and especially those that we name before you. O oh Lord, be with Kathy, Brian, Bill, Michael, 
Ron, Danielle, Ray, Isaac, Amber, Andrew, Latonya, Matt, Steve, Ron, uh, Pastor Dave, Richard, Fred, Becky, William, Alan, Sandy, Jim, Al, Carol, Al, Kristen, Gordon, Jen, and Jenny, uh, and those that we named before you even today in our own hearts and minds. Dear Lord, you need, you know their needs, you know their worries, their fears, their health. Dear Jesus, you know them. And we ask that you would be with them. Pour out upon them a health and healing, strength and recovery from all the distress that they have. But above all, remind them that you are their good shepherd, that you do love them. And in your love, you have promised to always be by their side. Grant them health and healing but above all the faith that holds on to and has trusted your promises that never fail us lord in your mercy hear our prayer. <clears throat> heavenly father god of all peace and concord it's your gracious will that your children on earth live together in harmony and peace we ask that you would bring peace into our world and into our lives defeat the plans of those who would stir up violence and strife destroy the weapons that are intended to harm and hurt us and according to your will end all conflicts in the world we pray for peace everywhere but especially today we pray for peace in the ukraine uh, that that uh, the aggressors would be uh, taught the ways of righteousness and cease military hostilities uh, help us examine our own hearts that we may recognize our own inclinations toward envy and malice, hatred and anger. And we pray for the people of Ukraine who are experiencing military aggression, that they may be kept safe from harm and, and know your presence, the Good Shepherd in their lives. We pray for the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Ukraine, that their pastors and people may find rest and comfort in your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And dear Jesus, we thank you today for moms. We give thanks for the faith and spirituality that moms pass on to the next generation. And we pray and thank you for the mom who takes seriously the biblical instruction to train up a child in the ways of the Lord. Dear Lord Jesus, on this day set aside to honor moms, we pray for moms who are struggling and for moms who are filled with joy, for moms of babies and moms of adults, for moms who are remembering children who have died or pregnancies that have miscarried, for those who are experiencing frustration and desperation, and for those who have mothered colleagues, mentees, neighbor kids, and anyone who needed them. We thank you for, for, for all these moms who are a part of our life. And we pray for those who are remembering moms that are no longer with us. Let us be grateful and helpful to the moms in our life, not just on Mother's Day, but every day. And we make this prayer in the name of Jesus, who loved his mother very much. Lord, in your mercy, hear us, O oh Lord, and give answer to the prayers of your people. Pray in the name of our Savior, our Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ, whom with the Father and the Spirit you are one God and one Lord, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. And hear us, Jesus, as we pray together the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And receive the blessing that God gives to you today and every day in your life. The Lord bless you and keep you. 
the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We'll continue or we'll close with our final hymn this morning. <coughs> today. God bless you for being here. And God bless you if you're watching us online with his word and with his love. He knows you as his own and he calls you to be his children. Um, I'm thankful that you were here. Uh, we certainly want to uh, celebrate with those who are celebrating this week. So birthdays this week is John, Dale, Terry, uh, Tom, and Leo. Let's give them our wishes and celebrate with them. God bless you on your birthday week this week. A um, couple of announcements to make. I already said it once, but I'll say it again. Happy Mother's Day for those of you who are moms here. Uh, God bless you for, for the work that you've done and continue to do in the lives of your children. I hope you have a good day. In honor of that special day, um, the church council is not meeting today. Um, so we actually, the council uh, rescheduled our meeting to the 22nd, two weeks from today, uh, so that they can be with you, you moms today. Um, this week we continue with our Bible class schedule. So remember Wednesday mornings at, at 1030, um, they, we have the Wednesday Bible class on Zoom. No, that's it. Yeah, it's at 10.30. Yeah, Wednesday at 10.30. Um, we have the Bible class on Zoom, which is on uh, Hebrews. Uh, next Sunday, we'll continue our Bible class. It's here in person and online on Facebook in the book of Judges. And Tuesday, uh, the women's Bible class, they've changed their schedule. Uh, they're going out for lunch. We're going out for lunch. Um, so there's more information. That's, I think, at 11.30. There's information in your bulletin. Look in the back for the details on that. This Thursday, uh, our service to the community continues with a blood drive, a Red Cross blood drive at the community center. Uh, if you'd like to give blood, you can still sign up. You sign up online and use the code L-O-L-C um, if you want to help. Uh, talk to Pam today, and she is here for you right now. Um, a week for our next Saturday, this coming Saturday, is our fish fry. Woo! After two long years, uh, we get to gather together again for our fish fry. Uh, on the blue table in the entryway, there are sheets. Sign up for attendance so that we just know how many people to be ready for. And if you can help us uh, break our uh, setup or take down and clean up, um, those sheets are on the blue table. I, I hope that you join us on Saturday for that. It already sounds good. Um, remember, uh, later this month also, we're doing sandwiches again that feed the homeless through with uh, in association with Rock of Ages Lutheran Church in Stone Mountain. I'm told we're still short some volunteers for that. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet on the blue table for that. And there's a little uh, instruction sheet to remind you of what we're looking for. Uh, those sandwiches you would make at home and bring back here on 
May 22nd, um, and then they'll be delivered up there and they will use those to feed the hungry uh, for the following week. So sandwiches for the homeless, we still need help and those are due on Sunday, May 22nd. Um, Operation Christmas Child is continuing. You can find the information um, uh, online uh, on our uh, email that we send out or in your bulletin, I think there's a sheet. Remember, uh, you have the option. You can either order things directly from Amazon and have them shipped to the church. Um, and that's, we have a wish list on Amazon in the church's name where you can find it. Or you can shop locally where you usually shop and, and bring those items in. And there's always a, a plastic tote in the entry where you can put those down. Um, Margaret, what are we on this month? I didn't bring up my note. Toothbrushes, deodorant, soap, and nail clippers. Toothbrushes, deodorant, soap, and nail clippers. So we can use all of those things. We're gathering them together all year, and then in November, we'll um, assemble the kits and uh, pass them along so they can touch somebody's life. Um, I've got one more thing that's not in your um, bulletin that just kind of came up. So this coming Saturday, the 14th, the, what date is Saturday? 14th, 14th yeah. Um, the uh, bank, the Bank South where the church is, uh, has an account, has a shred day. And we want to shred some of our out of date uh, information. But um, I've got seven boxes of stuff and they won't take them all from me. So if any of you uh, are around on Saturday morning or taking in your own things and you have some extra room, talk to me and we'll load you up with a, a box from church to take there as well. Um, they said on the phone, um, they, only, they have a limit of two boxes per person. Um, so um, just talk to me if this coming Saturday morning uh, you can uh, pick up some things and, and wait in line in order to, to have them shredded at the bank uh, or if you need any more information about that. Okay, did I miss anything? We have Coffee Fellowship today in honor of our mom, so we thank them for that. Stay and join us for that. God bless you. Remember our Bible classes and a fish fry this coming week. Uh, go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks. 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 Amen. Amen.